Hi, and welcome to this quick feature tutorial from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson, and today I'm going to show you how to use the Spin tool, or the Spin Mesh Modeling tool, in Blender 2.61. This is a really helpful tool that uh, is very commonly used for creating any kind of cylindrical shape, where you basically want to uh, loft or lathe a specific profile around a circular point. This is really helpful for creating anything from wine glasses to bottles, uh, anything that is consistent around a central axis. So it's pretty easy to use. I'm just going to go into front view here and then switch out of perspective mode by hitting numpad 5. And now let's just go and hit shift A. We'll add in a mesh object and we'll use this as the, the basis for the spin tool. So after adding in a plane, just hit tab to go into edit mode. And just to see what the spin tool does right off the bat, you can find it right here in the toolbar panel called spin. And with the mesh selected, if you just press spin, you'll immediately see what's happened. Basically, it's taken our current selection, in this case the entire plane, extruded it, and spun it around a total of nine times for a maximum a rotation of 90 degrees. So basically it's rotated this 90 degrees and had incremental steps nine times for that extrusion. Now you can see the options for the spin tool right down here. These options are in the operator panel at the bottom of your tool shelf, or you can also find them by pressing F6 immediately after using the spin tool in the viewport. So the number of steps here, if we increase this or decrease this, you can see what's happening. So this, you know, the higher this is, the more incremental steps up to 90 degrees we have. The duplicate option tells it to duplicate rather than extrude. So if we click this, you'll see that each piece is not actually attached to the previous piece. Uh, so this is very helpful if you're wanting to basically spin a duplicate of an object around something. So like if you wanted, if you had a single pillar right over here and you wanted to duplicate it around this point like that, then you could do that very easily. Um, going back here, let me just clear out my grease pencil and we'll undo our spin and then spin it again. So moving on, the other settings, basically we've got the degrees. So the maximum rotation where 90 degrees is the, the furthest extrusion is rotating 90 degrees from the original origin. You could set this to say 360 and then it would do a full circle. Uh, the center point then by default is just the center of the um, the mesh selection or excuse me, no, it's centered around the 3D cursor but you could go ahead and position this off to the side somewhere if you wanted. If we set the, the dupli option you can see this a little bit more clearly so you can adjust the the center point just like that. Generally it's not very good or you know maybe not very intuitive to set the the center axis here generally you would position the 3d cursor here wherever you want the exact center to be and then you would do your spin you can also adjust the axis that it's spinning around like this so you can see now it's rotating around that slight angle or around the y and around the z so any number of things that you can do with that to kind of get your specific results. By default, the spin tools axis that it uses is always perpendicular to the 3D viewport. Uh, and so it's, you know, if you do it from the front view it's, or from the top view, it's going to be flat. If you do it from the side view, it'll be flat this way. If you do it at an odd angle, such as like this, and we hit spin, You'll notice that has set the actual axis just like so. So you can get some kind of cool effects or more accuracy depending on what you're trying to do by setting the view and the 3D cursor and then performing the spin. So those are the, the actual settings for the spin tool, but let's look at a, a real world example here. So I'm just going to go in while still in edit mode, I'm going to hit X and delete all the vertices in my mesh. And then I'm just going to draw out a quick profile here uh, by control left clicking which will, or actually, it's not control left click, it's control action mouse. So if you've set your selection mouse to be your left mouse button, it's going to be control right click. Uh, but if we just control left click in my case, it'll position a new vertex at the depth of the 3D cursor. And now I can just actually do this a couple of times and extrude out a fairly quick and easy profile. So maybe we'll do kind of a, a bulbous bottle of some kind. So you can just imagine that this is just just a profile, so imagine you're looking at it right from the side, and there we go. So there's my basic shape, and now if I go to top view, select everything, and press the spin tool, you'll see exactly what's happened. We've extruded out the profile of that shape up to 90 degrees 
nine times. So if we set this degree to say 360, then we have nine separate extrusions with the last extrusion starting at the starting point since we did all 360. And then we could just increase this to make it nice and round. We'll just maybe go to four, or let's go to 16, because it's nice and smooth. And we have a nice simple bottle. Now you will notice that it does not automatically remove the duplicate edge. And so after doing this spin tool, you need to select everything and hit W, whoops, W and remove doubles. You can see it's removed 16 vertices because I have 16 vertices in my edge here. And at this point, we could go ahead and, you know, just work with our bottle to add some extra uh, smoothness. We could add a solidify modifier to add some thickness, any number of things. And very, very cool. So this is one way to make a bottle or a wine glass or any kind of cylindrical object that has a consistent profile. But let's look at, say, one more example, which you mentioned. I mentioned a pillar earlier. So let's just create a basic pillar. So I'm just going to go to top view. I'm going to hit shift A and I'm going to add in a cylinder. On this cylinder then, uh, let's go ahead and position it along the z-axis at 1. So it's right on the origin plane. And we're going to go ahead and set the, the depth to be, say, 4. And this means we need to move this up one more, so 2. And that'll probably work for our basic column. Now, you may remember that the spin tool, with duplicates or not, works around the 3D cursor. So with my 3D cursor at the center, if I wanted to duplicate this column around the origin, basically around here in a circle, I would need to move this out like that, say about somewhere in there. So basically just as far away from the center point as I want it to be. Maybe we could then select it, and I'm just going to go to top view. Remember that because it the spin tool works perpendicular to your view, so if we want this to go around like this, then we need to be sure that we do it from the top view. If we wanted it to go around like this, we would do it from the front view, etc. So from the top view, we can then just hit spin, which by the way is Alt-R. So if we press Alt-R in the viewport, you'll see it's spun those out. And it should have done extrusions, although I think right now, just based on the, the way that our mesh is created, it's not actually doing extrusions. So, but to be safe, let's just enable the dupli option. Let's set the degrees to be 360. And maybe we'll just do maybe six steps. So we have six uh, columns total. And then we could go ahead and just hit X and delete the vertices for the last step because it's duplicated on top of the, the first one. And there we go. So two different uses of the spin tool, one using just the regular spin, one using the spin with the dupli option enabled. Uh, very, very cool tool. Works really well for doing these kinds of things and is quite easy. One other use for it, and let's just add in, say, one more mesh. We'll add in a plane. And I'm just going to hit numpad slash, which goes into local view. And let's imagine that we wanted to make a nice rounded corner on this. Well, it's fairly easy to do using the spin tool. I could simply delete this vertex, which leaves me with an L, and I would just say select this single vertex, and I could just go ahead and hit spin, and it spins all the way around there. If I set that to be 180, it flips all the way around to that other vertex since these are at the same relative points, and then I can select everything, W, and remove doubles, and we now have a nice profile here that could be filled. But there's one more way that you could do it, which would be to position these vertices right on the 3D cursor, just like that. So the corner is right there. Select, say, this edge, then click Spin, and now we have a nice fan pattern going right out from that corner for creating a nice beveled corner any way that we want, where we could then go ahead and say Extrude This, and there you go. So one way that you could create some very easy uh, trim or anything like that with relative ease. And you can see how you, you know, you might go ahead and you could do that a couple times by putting, say, a line in here, or you could do another one out here. Any number of things that you could do using the spin tool very, very quickly. So, very handy tool, very easy to use, as long as the main thing to keep in mind is that it works a, by default around the 3D cursor. So, your any extrusion or duplicate you add will be added around the 3D cursor as the pivot point, and it works perpendicular to your view.